What's up YouTube? You're watching Faith by Flight. My name's Cole. Welcome to the first video in a series of videos I'm putting together for becoming a Navy officer. I'm currently in the process right now, so I feel I'm fairly qualified to talk about it. This will just be a simple guide on what the ATSB is, what to expect, uh, some of the bits in there. I'm going to put timestamps down below uh, for those of you that want to skip through certain portions of it. I understand. So without further ado, we'll get started. The ASTB, it is the Aviation Selection Test Battery. The E at the end of it is for electronics. So those of you that are taking this test overseas or in a place where you're fairly remote, you're going to get a paper copy. So some of the things I say on here will not apply to you. Uh, the E, you're going to be taking it on, on a computer. So it's a test for officer candidates. It determines your suitability for becoming an officer. So the higher your score... Basically, the higher your probability of completing OCS, and then if you're wanting to do the pilot or NFO positions, it will determine your probability of getting through ground school for both of those things. So the better you do, the better your odds are of making it through whatever you want to do. The test itself is adaptive. So the more answers correct, the harder the questions get. So if you're getting questions like, what color is the sky, then you're doing something wrong because obviously you're getting answers incorrect. So on top of that, you're going to be given a piece of scratch paper and some formulas. The formulas themselves will not be on a piece of paper. They will be in the formulas tab in the top right of your screen on the computer whenever you take the algebra or the uh, physics section of the test. So the seven subtests you're going to have to take. The OAR has three of them. So the OAR is your officer aptitude rating, which I'm actually going to talk about after this slide. It is the mass skills test, your reading comprehension test, and the mechanical comprehension test. And then the last four tests you're going to have to take is the ANIT, the NATFI, the PBM, and the BIRV. So I'm going to talk about each of these things. Like I said before, feel free to click on those timestamps to get to each of these things. So first off, the OAR, what is it? This is your officer aptitude rating. This is basically accumulation of, of all three of your subtests that you take. The lowest you can get is a 20. The highest you can get in is an 80. And the mean score for this is a 50. So if you're getting 50 and above, you're doing good for yourself. If you're getting 50 and below to maybe like a 40, uh, you can still get picked up, but you may have some questions thrown your way. So try to score above a 50 if at all possible. The math skills test consists of algebra, geometry, and probability. The algebra side of things, it can be as easy as 2x plus 2 equals 4, or, and it can be as hard as multiple parentheses solving the equation for a negative exponent with an X in it. So make sure that you're decent at algebra, solving functions, stuff like that. Geometry will just deal with shapes. So you're going to be figuring out the area of a square. You're going to be figuring out the volume of a cube. If you do well enough, you're going to be figuring out the volume of of a cube with a cylinder in it and then you got to figure out how much space is available inside of that cube with the cylinder inside of it and then you're going to be dealing with probability so that'll be like you know how many times you're going to get heads when a coin is flipped or how many different outfits can Susie wear with three different types of clothes and seven choices between those things so nothing too major to worry about with the math skills stuff unless you're just not all that good at math the reading comprehension test is just simply reading comprehension. They're going to give you a paragraph with a bunch of words, and you're going to have to understand what those words mean, and then you're going to answer a question based on those, uh, based upon the context of the passage that you just read. So if you're not good at English, uh, it may be a little difficult for you. The mechanical comprehension portion of the test, this was my favorite portion of the test, dealt with physics and simple machines. Uh, like I said before, the formulas will be in the top right of your screen for you, so you won't have to really worry about that. Uh, but a couple things you will need to know is like how many ounces are in a gallon and how many ounces are in a pound. That will really help you out going through this. And then simple machines, you're going to need to know pulleys, wedges, uh, levers, stuff like that. Another good thing to know about, uh, there are a couple questions that deal with gears that mesh together. Uh, it may have like three or four in series. So if like the second gear is turning clockwise, which way is the fourth gear turning? Stuff like that. And then also with the gearing, it has 
like a five tooth gear with a 12 tooth gear. It's like, okay, the 12 tooth gear spins six times. How many times does the five gear tooth spin? So you'll have to figure out some things like that. The four remaining tests is the ANIT, uh, which is your aviation and Navy history and your aviation nautical terms and procedures. The good thing about this one is it's the easiest to study for, mainly because it doesn't change. If you have had any flight training at all as well, this section will be pretty easy for you because a lot of the information from the Navy side of things translates over into the aviation side of things. <clears throat> Excuse me. The NAPFI, Naviation, Naval Aviation Trait Facet Inventory. You cannot study for this. Uh, there are two questions that may or may not be related, and you have to choose the one that closest relates to you. So these questions can be like, I cheat on tests. And the other one will be, I don't tell people when I mess things up. And then you have to choose which one's the best out of those two. So they can be very negative. Uh, the whole, my whole experience with this was kind of negative. It's like two bad things and you have to choose from the lesser of two evils. So just run through it. There's no way to game this system. Like just do your best on it. And then the BIRV, it's all about yourself. So where you're from, how much aviation experience do you have? Have you played a sim before? Stuff like that. And then your PBM, I think this is what everyone's here for. So the PBM is your performance base measures battery. It has three components, it has the UAV uh, component, a listening component, and a stick and throttle component. So the UAV, I'm gonna talk about here, you're gonna have a north up map with a UAV facing a certain way it'll tell you which way it's heading and then you're gonna have a picture of a car park so that car park will be in relation to which way you're heading so since the UAV is heading south we are going this way this is technically south there's a video on YouTube that is extremely helpful I will link it down below on how to do really well on this section using a piece of scratch sheet of paper and just drawing out a simple compass rose uh, I did it and it really helped me out. So I will link that down below. The throttle and stick section. Here we go. This is what you are all probably here for. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to put on a headset. And it's going to have you listen to both ears. And you're going to click a button on the throttle and the stick. Uh, whenever a number is either odd or even. It depends on the test, of course. So basically what you're going to do, you're going to put on this headset, make sure that you can hear first off and second off, make sure it's playing through both ears. Whenever I went to take the initial portion of this test, the headset didn't work. It was only playing out of my right ear and that would have totally jacked up everything I was trying to do. So I went over to Houston and took it there and it all worked properly, thankfully. So what's going to happen is the voice in the headset is going to say, listen to your left ear. And then I'll say a series of letters and numbers. And your right ear, at the same time, will be saying a series of letters and numbers. You're going to have to differentiate between the two because at the same time, the right ear could be saying I and the left one could be saying nine. When both of those are said at the same time, they sound almost identical. So it's kind of hard to tell them apart and which one said which. So try to pay attention as best as possible. Turn up the volume as loud as you can stand to help yourself out. Uh, also... Once you get done with this section, you're going to be moving into the vertical uh, component of the test. So you're going to be using the throttle for this. This plane will move up and down at varying rates. By the end of it, the plane's going to be juking you out. So don't worry about it. The test is mainly seeing how close you can get your crosshair to the plane. Um, so make sure whenever you're doing the practice portion of this, you identify the dead zone in the throttle and the portions of the throttle that'll make the target move. Because uh, whenever I took it, there was a dead zone in the middle of the throttle. And then the top 20% and the bottom 20% of the throttle actually made the crosshair move over the target. So that's all you need to do there. For the stick section, you're going to be having an airplane and another crosshair. You're going to do this separately as well. Whenever you are calibrating the airplane, it's going to move you, or not the airplane, your uh, stick. It's going to have you move the stick forward and left to get it to the top left corner and it's gonna have you move it down and right to get it to the bottom right corner. 
This is a negative transfer into the actual test. In order to make the airplane go up, you have to pull down. In order to make the airplane go down, you have to push up. So down goes up, up goes down. It's opposite of the way they have you calibrate it. It was actually kind of annoying whenever I started doing the practice portion of the test because I wanted to go up and left to follow this thing up and left. And I saw my crosshair dipping down and left. So it got kind of annoying. So make sure whenever you're going through the practice test that you actually get the hang of what's going on there. Otherwise, this section will jack you up. Um, this airplane, it doesn't just move up, down, left, and right on rails. It will like start floating in a circle and then go off to the right and then down and then left. And oh man, it's a pain. So do your best on it. Sometimes the stick uh, won't go as fast as you want it to. Just try to get it as close to the target as possible. That's all they really care about. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to be doing the throttle and the stick together. So this thing on the left is going to be moving up and down at varying rates. And this thing in the center is going to be moving all over the place at varying rates as well. So what do you do? You focus on the center one and you put this left one in your peripheral. That is the best way to do this section of the test that I have found anyways. So focus on the one in the center. Put the throttle side of things in your left peripheral. Because you will be able to see this target move up and down. You'll be able to tell if your crosshair is over it or not. I promise you. Also, it doesn't really matter because it just it just wants to see how close you can get to the airplane on both of these things. So follow the middle one around and then don't really worry about the throttle one. You know, check it every four to five seconds to see if you're even close and then get it close. The last and final, no, actually second to last thing they're going to have you do is have that headset on. And you're going to be listening to your left and right ears again and clicking buttons while you're following these two things. I cannot stress this enough. Listen more than track. The listening is way more important than you tracking the targets. Get as close as you can to the targets, but listen to the best of your ability because otherwise uh, this portion of the test is going to jack you up as well. The listening is the most important thing. The listening is the most important thing. The listening is the most important thing. Hopefully I don't need to say that again, but the listening is the most important thing. So again, same strategy, put the center bit here, dead in front of you, put the throttle side of things in your peripheral and then listen. That's all you got to do. If you got to let go of the stick and throttle just to listen, do it. Click your trigger and cage button over following these things. So the last thing you're going to have you do these three boxes at the bottom uh, it's going to be three different checklists you have to memorize. You have as much time as you need in order to memorize those. Um, I'm not really going to go through those because I feel that those are things that you just need to see for yourself and do for yourself. So the last three scores you get uh, is your AQR, your PFAR, and the FOFAR. So y'all can read all this. I don't need to read it to you, but I got a 7, 8, and a 7 on all these things. So I scored fairly high on these. It's mainly due to my previous experience or my experience as a pilot. Um, I have my commercial single, my commercial multi, and then I have all my CFI ratings as well. So, um, it only makes sense that I would do well on the flight portion of things. So if you, uh, I'm going to go through the minimums, minimum scores that you need for these, um, your OCS score, you just need the OAR and then your Naval Aviator AQR plus your PFAR and then your flight officer side of things, you need the AQR and the FOFAR. These on the bottom left are your minimums for each of the testings. Uh, if you want to be a Naval Aviator, you need a 4 on the AQR and a 5 on the PFAR. If you want to be a flight officer, you need a 4 on the AQR and a 5 on the FOFAR and then Marines and Coast Guard, um, those are your scores there. How to prepare for this thing. I used uh, Baron's military flight aptitude test on Amazon. Uh, I have Amazon prime, so I got it for 20 bucks new. I think it's like 30 or 40. If you don't have prime, uh, this is a study guide. I used it helped me out with the OAR and the ANIT portion of the test. Um, I really recommend it. If you're not doing, uh, Navy or Marines, uh, this is still helpful for the Coast Guard, the Air Force, and the Army officer test because Barron's not only has stuff for the Navy and the Marines, it has all all of the officer tests in there, and it it really helps help me out. And then also, next thing you want to do is run through high school and college notes if you have them around. I didn't, so I just used Barron's and then my knowledge from the college courses that I took. Uh, PBM, the performance-based measure section, best thing you can do is fly some sims. If you got a buddy that has a sim set up at his house, go ask and see if you can fly it. 
because this is the only way you're really going to get comfortable with the stick and throttle setup. And then go check out the video for the UAV section. I'll have that listed uh, in the description as well. So these are my sources for it. Uh, and then obviously Barron's. So uh, good luck to you if you are taking this test. Hopefully this helped explain some things. If not, ask me a question about it. I am more than willing to answer questions about this test. Um, I'm here to help you. <laughs> so anyway, y'all have a good one. Uh, leave a comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see y'all in the next one.